Hi everyone, good evening. So my name is JD and I will be your teacher, instructor for Science, Technology and Society. So welcome to another new chapter of our discussion. Nasa new chapter na tayo, we're already done with the history of science and technology. Uh, uh, now we are going to the new chapter. The new chapter is the Intellectual and Scientific Revolutions. This is chapter two of the Science, Technology and the Society. So for chapter two of science, technology, and society, scientific and intellectual revolutions. So scientific and intellectual revolutions are a series of events that mark the emergence of new concept of introduction of modern science. If you remember our previous discussion that uh, in science, kung ano yung totoo before, it cannot be, it can be not true now, and what was not true before can be true now. <clears throat> So that is science because science is transforming, transcending. So in 1962, an, an author or a writer and a scientific writer called named Thomas Kuhn wrote a book na nagngangalang Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Dito sa Structure of Scientific Revolutions, he stated that science undergoes revolutions, meaning it changes all throughout time. But why does it change? Because it enters a new paradigm called the paradigm shift or shifting of paradigms, changing from the previous normal to the new normal. Yung normal ngayon, hindi ito normal before. Just last year, just around February, what was normal then is not normal now. We are now entering a new normal. So, ganun din sa science. There are concepts that are not accepted in science but were accept, accepted later on. Uh, but were accepted later on. Okay? So, the learning objective of this uh, chapter is one, discuss intellectual and scientific revolutions through the history and uh, through historical and philosophical approach. Identify notable scientific contributions of each intellectual revolutions. Identify the people and civilizations behind the intellectual revolution. Recognize when an intellectual revolution is necessary. Illustrate a possible intellectual revolution in the current situation. Participate in the intellectual revolutions focus group discussions. Appreciate the importance and impact of scientific and intellectual revolutions. So these are the learning objectives that we expect to have after our discussion. <clears throat> so let's jump into the first lesson of the intellectual revolution and scientific revolutions. This is chapter 2, lesson 1. Uh, the chapter 2, lesson 1, but this is a continuation of the previous chapter. So this is lesson 6 already. Uh, chapter 2, Lesson 6, called the Copernican Intellectual Revolution. So Copernican intellectual, intellectual Revolution is an intellectual revolution that made us known on how to view the universe, uh, the world, the universe, rather. This uh, intellectual revolution answered the question, where are we? Nasaan nga ba ang Earth? Nasaan nga ba tayo sa isang napakalaking universe na ito? The question understanding how the days and nights happen and understanding the heavenly bodies like stars, moon, and sun, this quest was primarily attempted by Greek philosophers. In this intellectual revolution, there are two major concepts to understood which involves understanding the universe. <coughs> The, inter, uh, the Copernican Intellectual Revolution is an intellectual revolution about the universe. Dati, nung unang panahon, ang mga unang nag-venture nito recorded are the Asians and the Greeks. And one of the notable people who started doing or trying to understand the, the stars no, uh, is Aristotle and Plato. But prior to that, even the Egyptians tried to understand the Middle Eastern civilization, tried to understand the moon, the stars, and the solar system or the galaxy. So, ano nga ba yung unang konsepto na meron tayo? Claudius Ptolemy uh, proposed geocentrism at around 50, uh, 150 BCE. 
And that is why it is sometimes referred as the Ptolemic model of the universe. Okay? So Claudius Ptolemy ay isang matematisyan, astronomer, geographer, at astrologer mula sa Greece. Siya ang nag-propose ng geocentrism. Okay? It's a, a view of the universe on where is Earth or where is the sun in uh, this uh, concept of the universe. <clears throat> So, nakatira siya sa Alexandria, one of the cities of Rome and the province of Egypt, and ruled under uh, and is ruled under the Roman Empire, and used Babylonian observations and Babylonian lunar theory in understanding the universe. So, this is geocentrism. So, geocentrism ay isang konsepto kung saan ang Earth ang pinaniniwala ang sentro ng universe as seen in the figure na ang tingin ng mga tao nung panahon niya at nung sinaunang panahon na ang Earth ang center ng universe at ang araw, gayon din ang mga planeta at ang mga between ay nagre-revolve around our planet, around the planet Earth. In fact, Claudius also created his cosmological almagests no? and also called mathematical syntaxes na nagpo-prove o nagpapatunay na ang Earth ay nasa sentro ng universe. This was also edited and reviewed by Hypatia. Hypatia is a female philosopher. There are only few female philosophers no, uh, eh, during that time. Actually, she's one of the very, very, very few that time. Um, and she is a recorded natural philosopher. The Alma just stated that the heavens move like spheres and the earth and the heavenly bodies are sphere and that the earth is the center of the universe. So basically, naniniwala sila that the earth is not square, it's not flat. The earth is spherical and it moves um, around, uh, around the... Uh, uh, and the earth is the center of the universe at yung mga planeta at yung mga araw at yung mga between ay umiikot, no? Uh, paikot dito sa planetang ito. Dahil naniniwala nga sila that the Earth is the center of the universe. But this time, during this time, they're already encouraging that the Earth is not flat. flat. The concept of geocentrism was challenged by another concept on how to view the universe many times. This concept is called heliocentrism. Kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina that intellectual revolution is an emergence of new concept. Merong isang konsepto, existing concept, at may dadating na panibagong konsepto na kakaibang kakaiba dito sa normal na konsepto natin ngayon, at papalitan niya ito. Okay? So ito yung magiging bagong konsepto na kung ano nga ba ang pananaw natin sa isang konsepto. So that is the old normal and the new normal. Ganon yung nangyari dito sa Copernican Intellectual Revolution. Pinaniniwala ang normal na ang Earth, ang sentro ng universe. Pero dumating ang konsepto ng heliocentrism. Ang heliocentrism, ang konsepto kung saan ang araw ang gitna ng universe o ng solar system. At ang Earth, kagaya ng ibang planeta at ng mga between, ay nagre-revolve lang din around the sun. Okay? That the Earth is the center, of the, uh, that the Sun is the center of the solar system, and it's not the Earth. That the Earth is not the center of the universe. In fact, it's just a part of the universe. So, yon, unang konsepto ay geocentrism. Ito ay tinatanggap na nakararami. Tinanggap ito ng simbahan, tinanggap ito ng mga uh, philosophers during that time. At nung dumating ang heliocentrism, hindi naging madali. Dahil nga, meron ng nag existing philosophy or existing principle about the, the universe called the geocentrism, naging mahirap no, para ipakilala ang heliocentrism. Ang unang tao nagpakilala nito ay si Aristarchus of Samos. As Aristarchus of Samos existed in around 310 to 230 BCE. And he is an ancient Greek mathematician at astronomer din mula sa Ionia. At siya ay nag-conceptualize ng revolutionary hypothesis called the, Jason, uh, the heliocentrism. Pero dahil kulang ito sa ebidensya, kulang ito sa 
uh, pagpapaliwanag, hindi ito kaagad tinanggap ng uh, nakararami. Dahil mas madaling isipin na ang Earth ang gitna ng universe, mas madaling tinanggap ang geocentrism kaysa sa heliocentrism. Base nga naman sa pag-obserba ng mga uh, common people during that time. Okay? So we cannot blame them. The heliocentric view was not accepted. Instead, the geocentric view was more accepted because it is more reasonable during the time of Aristarchus. Reasonable naman talaga yon. Siguro hindi pa panahon, no, nung panahon ni Aristarchus, na paniwalaan na ang Earth ay hindi sentro ng universe. Kasi nga, mas madali naman kasi talagang paniwalaan na ang Earth ang center ng universe base sa pagsikat ng araw at paglubog ng araw, gayon din ang buwan at ang mga between. That's the initial observation. This is followed by Nicole de Orem. After uh, more than a thousand years, almost two, uh, more than 1.5 thousand years, um, Nicole de Orem tried to review the works of uh, Aristarchus. And then he was inspired by it and in 1370, uh, a philosopher astronomer no nagsulat siya ng libro na called the, the book of heaven and the earth he is now introducing and supporting the concept of heliocentrism na ay okay hindi ang earth ang sentro ng universe it's just part of the universe at ang sentro ng universe ay ang araw okay ang araw Nag-provide siya ng mas madaming ebidensya kaysa kay Aristarchus. Nag-provide din siya ng more mathematical equations proving that the sun is the center of the universe. Pero dahil sa panahong ito, malakas ang simbahan. Hindi tinatanggap ng simbahan ang mga ganitong konsepto dahil ito ay labag sa kanilang pananampalataya. And when I say simbahan, this is largely by the Catholic Church or by the uh, Roman Empire pa rin kasi ang prevailing uh, prevailing uh, empire during this time. So, the sun no, cannot be the center of the universe. The earth is the center of the universe. At dahil nga hindi ito tanggap ng nakararami, hindi ito tanggap ng common people, hindi din ito tanggap ng simbahan, muli, hindi na naman tinanggap ang konsepto ng heliocentrism at nanatili ang pananaw na geocentrism na hindi hindi ang araw ang gitna ng universe instead the earth is still the center of the universe yun yung panini pinaniniwalaan during the time of the cold theorem in 1370s or around 1400s uh, the 14th century rather the 1300s now the geocentric view was once again prevailed. So, mulit-muli, nanalo na naman ang geocentrism. Pero, no 16th century, a Polish mathematician reviewed the works of Aristarchus and Nicole de Orem. Inaral niya yung mga gawa ni Aristarchus at saka ni Nicole de Orem. At muli niyang inayos, pinaganda ang argumentation, pinaayos ang mga konsepto na kapalibot dito. At ito ay si Nicholas Copernicus or Nicholas Copernicus. Kaya ito, uh, Copernican Intellectual Revolution. The Copernican Intellectual Revolution did the start with Nicholas Copernicus. It started way, way back during the time of Aristarchus. Muli niya, uh, in the 16th century, no, he reintroduced, inayos niya at pinaganda niya, o, o, muli niyang pinakilala ang heliocentric view gamit ang kanyang libro, libro na De Rev. O kaya naman, The Revolutionibus Orbium Colestium. The Revolution of the Heavenly Spheres. The Revolution of the Heavenly Spheres meaning the movement of the heavenly spheres. Ano ba yung heavenly spheres? The planets, the sun, no? sphere. No? And he stated in his, the, here his cosmological theories like the earth is not the center of the universe. The center of the universe is near the sun, and the Earth is uh, the Earth Sun distance is negligible compared to the distance to the stars. He did not publish this book until his latter years. 
because he knew that this book will be controversial upon his death, came the rise of the Copernican Intellectual Revolution. Yung kanyang libro na De Rev, hindi niya agad ito nilabas. Nicholas Copernicus also works as in the church. At alam niya na kapag nilabas niya ang librong ito, hindi ito magiging katanggap-tanggap kaagad ng simbahan. And um, because of that, he only published this nung malapit na siyang uh, mawala. No? But then again, nung namatay siya, hindi ito ang naging hudyat ng pagkatigil ng Copernican Intellectual Revolution. In fact, this was rekindled and rethought by following scientists. This is a lesson spotlight. Ptolemy said, the earth is the center of the universe. Sabi naman ni Nicholas Copernicus, no, you are mistaken. The center of the universe is near the sun. This was followed by Tycho Brahe. Tycho Brahe. So, uh, in the same century, in the 16th century, also a Danish nobleman, astronomer, writer, known for his accurate and comprehensive astronomical observation, kasama ang kanyang kapatid na si Sophia Brahe, uh, took some concepts of geocentric view and heliocentric view and fused the two concepts and proposed geoheliocentric view. So, during this time then, nung pinakilala muli ni uh, Nicholas Copernicus ang heliocentric view, uh, Tycho Brahe is also an astronomer. No? Hindi niya agad tinanggap ang heliocentric view. In fact, he took concepts from geocentric view at kumuha siya ng konsepto mula sa heliocentric view at pinagsama niya ito at ginawa niyang geoheliocentric view. Siya ay, in fact, a uh, quick trivia, no? He, he, uh, he is a very lucky man kasi a scientist having a great fund during this time, panahon ngayon, ay mahirap. Lalo na sa panahon nila. Kasi ang science hindi agad pinopondohan, no? Pero dati, ang mga scientists, ang mga hari, pinopondohan talaga nila ang, ang sciences. So the Dutch king provided him fully funded research island. Meron siyang dalawang two observatory castles. When you say two observatory castles, dito siya nag observe ng mga astronomical events. Nandiyan si Uraniborg, no? The Uraniborg, the castle of the heavens, and the Sterniborg, the castle of the stars. Dito niya sinulat ang kanyang libro na De Nova Stella na tinatawag din na New Star. Kaso, kaso, um, itong castles na to ay nasira, ay, ay, itong castles na to ay kinuha sa kanya after mamatay nung Dutch King. Nung namatay yung hari na pumupondo doon sa research island niya, ang nangyari ay pumalit yung anak nun na 19 years old. Ngayon, yung anak na 19 years old na to, mas gusto niya sumugod lang ng sumugod sa gera. So, hindi niya na sinuportahan yung research island and research facility ni uh, Tycho Brahe. After not supporting this, um, he had to travel. Okay? He had to transfer and had to work with other uh, scientists. Okay? So, too bad. So, kung pakikita natin dito, no, mahalaga talaga ang suporta ng pamahalaan sa mga scientific advancement and scientific research. Okay, a uh, quick trivia lang din ulit. In 1956, at age 20, uh, Tycho Brahe lost his nose. Nakipag-away kasi si Tycho Brahe nung 20 years old siya sa kanyang pinsan at kaibigan na si Mandera Parberg. Si Mandera Parberg ay isa ding astronomer at and mathematician. Alam niyo kung ano pinagtalunan nila? Ang pinagtalunan po nila ay isang mathematical equation. No? So isang mathematical equation lang pinagtalunan nila pero nag-away sila gamit ang espada at dahil dito natapyas ang ilong ni Tycho Brahe. Yun din ang sinasabing dahilan na maaaring posibleng pagkamatay niya dahil nagkaroon ng poisoning doon sa kanyang uh, nose dahil nagkaroon ng reaction yung metal nose niya. Kasi nagkaroon siya ng synthetic nose after matapyas yung ilong niya. So... Um, Tycho Brahe actually had to work with Johann Kepler. This is supposed to be Johann Kepler. Johann Kepler. So, Johann Kepler naman ay isang German astronomer. 
Mathematician at Astrologer. At sinulat niya naman ang librong Astronomia Nova. Ito naman ay tinatawag na New Astronomy. Dito, nagpakita siya ng kanyang tatlong planetary motions. He provided evidences that strengthened the heliocentric view. He, in his own way, introduced the concept to the Church saying that faith, empirical data, and elegant mathematics all sync. So si Johan Kepler naman ay pinakita niya itong kanyang stands no, sa simbahan sa isang maayos na pamamaraan. Kaya do, during this time, unti-unti na din nagkakaroon ng pagtanggap ang simbahan pagdating sa pananaw na ang Earth ay hindi talaga sentro ng universe. In fact, sinabi pa nga ni Johan Kepler na my faith, empirical data, and elegant mathematics all sync. So naniniwala siya na ang kanyang mathematics, ang kanyang observation at ang kanyang pananampalataya ay nagkakasundo na ang Earth ay hindi sentro ng universe, na ang Sun ang sentro ng universe. Of course, the heliocentric view or the Sun is the center of the universe is known across Europe. Ito ay mas lalong pinaigting, mas lalong pinagtibay ng mga ebidensya na na naiambag ng mga iba't ibang scientists. Pero, noong 19, uh, 1609, 1608, naimbento ang isang panibagong teknolohiya, panibagong instrumento na maaaring makapagpatulong, na makapagtulong sa pagpapaigting ng pag-unawa sa universe. At ito ang telescope. 1608, naimbento ang telescope. Kaya niyang i-magnify ang regular size ng multiplied by 8. Pero, In 1609, si Galileo Galilei ay nag uh, inimprove niya ito. Minultiply niya by 15, binultiply niya by 30 ang magnification ng telescope. At si Galilei again, si Galileo Galilei po ay hindi ang nag-invento ng telescope. Siya po ang nag-reinvent nito no, para magamit sa pag-aaral ng kalawakan. Ito ay inimbento ng isang Dutch spectacle maker na si Hans Lippershain na mula sa Holland. He is the first person, si Galileo Galilei, hindi siya ang nag-invento ng telescope, pero siya ang unang tao na nag-enhance, no? na nag-reinvent ng telescope para gamitin ito sa pag-aaral ng kalawakan. Again, Galileo Galilei did not invent the telescope, but Galileo Galilei is the first person to use the telescope to study the universe. Galileo is an Italian astronomer, physicist, and engineer, sometimes described as a polymath from Pisa. Galileo has been called the father of observational astronomy, father of modern physics, father of scientific method, and father of modern, of modern science. He has provided more evidences supporting the heliocentric view of the universe. If you remember our discussion doon sa scientist lecture natin, Galileo Galilei is uh, one of the three founding fathers of scientific method. Isa siya sa mga tao na kinikilalang naging pundasyon ng scientific method sa paglikha ng scientific method. At kung maaalala din ninyo, doon ay tinawag din siyang the father of scientific method. He also became the father of modern science because during this time he was already using tools, no, to enhance his observations. So, the Copernican intellectual revolution did not die along with the Copernicus. Nung namatay si Copernicus, hindi yun ang naging hujat ng Copernican intellectual revolution. In fact, hindi naman talaga nagumpisa ang Copernican intellectual revolution kay Copernicus. Pero si Copernicus ay nag-provide na mas magaganda at mas matitibay na ebidensya na sinundan ng mga ibang astronomer, ng mga panibagong astronomer. No? At progressive series of events which eventually led to the birth of modern astronomy. Okay? So again, science is not a one-man team. It's a team effort based on the series of events, contributions of various astronomers from Aristarchus uh, to Ptolemy to time of the Coldeorum to time of um, Nicholas Copernicus to time of uh, Tycho Brahe, Johann Kepler, 
and Galileo Galilei. But don't get me wrong, mas madami pang scientists or astronomers ang nag-aaral tungkol sa kalawakan during that time. I only highlighted those who largely participated in the intellectual revolution. Uh, this has led to the current understanding of the universe. So kung ano yung pagkakaunawa natin ngayon sa kalawakan, ayon ay dahil sa patuloy na pagsuporta o patuloy na pag-contribute ng iba't ibang scientists. Hanggang ngayon, no? Until now, the hum humanity still seeks further understanding of the universe. Hanggang ngayon, patuloy pa rin natin sinusubukang unawain kung nasan nga ba tayo sa universe. Diba nga, um, may mga uh, Mars missions pa nga that uh, we are sending people to Mars, no? we are sending people to Moon, we are sending people to the universe. So Kasi we are still questioning kung nasaan nga ba ang Earth o nasaan nga ba tayo. Okay? But for now, kung ano yung mga meron tayo, we have to thank these to the people who tried to work and understand the universe. So lesson, spotlight ng the Copernical Intellectual Revolution did not only change the way how we view the world, but it also changed the way how we view the universe. So that is the Copernican Intellectual Revolution. Isang lumang paniniwala na ang paniniwala natin na ang Earth ang sentro ng universe. But because of the Copernican intellectual revolution and contributions of various astronomers during that time, no, and until today, no, we have continually accepted that the Earth is not the center of the universe. In fact, the center of the solar system is, the, is near the sun. Not necessarily the sun, but somewhere near the sun. Okay, so let's set things clear and straight. The Earth, uh, ang isa sa napagkasunduan ng geocentric at heliocentric view, the Earth is not flat. Okay, the Earth is not flat. The Earth is spherical, bola. It's like a ball. Okay, all other spherical, uh, all other heavenly bodies are also spherical. Walang flat. Okay, there's no flat Earth. So, that is the first intellectual revolution that we already talked about, that we talked about, no? the Copernican intellectual revolution, changing the way how we view the universe. So, should you have any questions or clarification regarding the lecture on the Copernican intellectual revolution, kindly comment at the comment section. Thank you.